20,000 people, 50,000, should be a lot of, lot of people. I can only imagine that so many people come to such a conference because there's a benefit for them, a financial benefit. Certainly, I think that a lot of the non-governmental organisations who sent people to this conference, in fact, very nearly all of them, because I went round and checked, are paid for by taxpayers, not by the donations of the poor, but by taxpayers who are now funding, whether they like it or not, a quite nasty new political movement which calls itself environmentalist but doesn't really care about the environment. One of my friends, Eric Ellington, was one of the founders of Greenpeace. He left after about a year because the organisation that he had founded, along with his friends, to be a genuine organisation caring about the environment, had been captured by the extreme Marxist political left and was being used for political ends that had nothing whatever to do with the environment. And that is still the case today. And they now have a fleet in Green Fleece, which is larger than the British Navy. That's how much money they have. Where do they get it from? Taxpayers. But there are others benefiting from this conference. There are, of course, the delegations from the nations who are here. They are paid for by taxpayers. There are the corporate uh, people here who are making money out of carbon trading, making well, money yeah, out of windmills. Yeah, you have to... No, yes. I'll, 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 uh, please elaborate on that, uh, because nobody understands that. Uh, we're told um, big money, big, cor big corporations, especially big oil, mm. is against climate regulations. Far uh, from it now. Far from it now. What has happened is that ExxonMobil, for instance, which used to fund organizations that said climate change is not happening, or if it is happening, it's happening naturally. Now, for many years, they have not done that because they can make more money by cozying up to governments that find it expedient for the time being, though not, I think, for much longer, to believe in this nonsense. And they're getting into carbon trading, they're getting into alternative energies, they're getting into subsidies of various kinds from uh, national governments. They can make more money always by going along with whatever is fashionable in government at a given time than they can by standing by the truth. And so when a new chief executive officer of ExxonMobil was appointed a few years ago, he said, we're not going to fund the groups that oppose the climate nonsense. Not because ExxonMobil thinks for a moment that humankind is affecting the climate in dangerous ways. Of course, it doesn't. But because they can make more money by pretending that that's what they do believe. And many of the largest corporate organizations whom you would expect to oppose this nonsense are in fact pretending, but only pretending, to go along with it so that they too can make lots and lots of money out of it. So you have the governments making money, you have NGOs making money out of it, you have corporate world making money out of it, you have the academic world making money out of it, you have scientists making money out of it, you have the media making money out of it. So who pays? The answer, you and me. And I can't afford it, so over to you. Al Gore is supposed to be the first carbon billionaire in the world, and even the chairman of the IPCC, Rajendra Pachauri, is supposed to receive hundreds of millions uh, out of carbon trade. Can you explain how such a thing happened? Rajendra Pachauri is supposed to be the chairman of the IPCC. Now, this is odd because he is a railroad engineer. Yes, yes, we're always hearing that if you want to talk about the climate, you have to be a climatologist, a four-star climatologist at least. But he's not a climatologist. No, all you have to be is somebody who goes along with the nonsense. It doesn't matter what qualifications you have or don't have, as long as you're willing to agree to what the extreme left wishes you to agree. Rajendra Pachauri saw very early on that the thing to do is to pretend to agree with the climate nonsense. He himself doesn't know enough climate science to know one way or the other whether what he is saying is right. I went to a lecture that he gave at the University of uh, Copenhagen three nights ago. In that lecture, he told lie after lie after lie. It would have been lies if he had known what he was talking about, but he didn't. I called him out on just one of the lies. He had used a graph which was bogus. He was trying to pretend that the rate of increase in temperature has itself been increasing over the last 150 years globally. 
It hasn't. The technique he was using to pretend that it had came from an IPCC document, but it was bogus. It was invented by one of the scientists in the Climate Gate emails. It was a bogus, fraudulent graph designed so that scientists could make money whipping up fears about, cl fears about climate change. So I confronted him with this, and I said, this is fraudulent, you ought not to use it. I explained why it was wrong, I gave him 48 hours to correct it, and I gave him a letter, 10 pages long, explaining in great detail, including an answer I'd got from the British government, obtained from the IPCC about this graph, that it was wrong. I gave him 48 hours to reply. He didn't reply. I am now going to turn that letter over to the Indian police and I am going to say that Rajendra Pachari is a fraudster on one of the biggest scales I've ever seen in the world. Because while he has been chairman of the IPCC, he has also been chairman of the Tata Steel Industries Energy Research Institute, which employs 700 people worldwide. One of its subsidiaries, Tata Biotech, is currently bidding for a contract to clean up the oil fields of Kuwait after Saddam Hussein set them on fire. And that contract is being awarded, guess who by? By the UN, of which Pachari is a senior official. Mm -hmm. And he is using fraudulent graphs from the UN to promote the global warming scare, out of which Tata Industries is making a very large fortune by closing down a steel works in the north of England, employing 700 people, throwing them on the dole, and opening exactly the same steelworks in India. He, it gains money from the British government for reducing Britain's carbon footprint. It gets more money from the Indian government for producing steel more efficiently than it was produced in India before. And it gets money from the UN, where Pachari is chairman of the climate panel, under the clean development mechanism, and our workers in Britain lose their jobs. That is financial fraud on a monstrous scale. When this man uses a graph which I told him was wrong, I gave him 48 hours to come back to me, he didn't do it, he is going to jail for fraud. You heard it here first.